Have you ever wanted to be a pirate? Well, if you have, this is your lucky day because now you have the opportunity to take over Blackbeard's fleet. That's right, Blackbeard has disappeared and now you have an opportunity to take over his entire fleet. If you can, of course, because there are others trying to do the same thing as you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up this game and how to play it. What I have here is a prototype. It's a well-made prototype, but it is still a prototype. So from what you see here to the finished game, well, some things might change. But this will give you a great idea of how the game will look and how it will play. So let's just take a look at this. We start by placing the Nassau board in the center of the table for all players to easy reach. Here you will be able to do actions. Next to that board we place the 9 ships. These 9 ships are the ones that you might take over during the gameplay. Next to the gaming area we also place the gold and the rum to form a general supply. Then we need to set up the card shop. We need to take the Blackbeard card deck, shuffle it and then take the top five card and put out on this market. Like this here. The last spot should not be filled as this is the discard pile. Next we need to set up our player area. First we need to choose a captain. Here we can see our captain name and down here we can see an ability. But I will tell you more about this in a bit. We also need to choose a color and then take the corresponding pieces of that color. The pirates, the boats. If you are the first player, you need to take the first player token, but also the mutiny token. And then we need to take our starting deck. We can see that this is our starting deck by looking at the color of the background of these cards. They will correspond to our player color. You now need to remove cards so you have 10 cards on your hand. But do not let the other players know which card you remove from your deck. Once you have done this, you take it and place it next to your captain board. And then you also get some starting resources, depending on which player you are. The first player gets one Rome and one gold. The second player would get two gold. The third player would get one Rome and two golds. While the fourth player would get one Rome and two golds. These resources are put into our little neat chest. Once you have done this, you should draw five cards from your deck and put into your hand as your starting hand. Now the players need to put out some pretty officers, that's right, that's what these were called, but also a slope out on the Nasu board itself. Each player places a slope on the fifth field on the treasure map track. We put out one on zero on the control fleet track, one on the flying gang support track, plus one of each of the four different venue track. The marketplace, merchant fields and the tavern. Starting with the first player, each player places out two pirate pawns from the resource on any ship mutiny field out on the board. The last player gets to place an additional third pirate pawn. So your goal of this game is to become a powerful pirate by pretty much taking over Blackbeard's fleet. Once you take over the different ships, you will advance on the tracks out on the Nasaru board. At the end of the game, you will score depending on where you are on these different tracks. During your turn, you can of course do different actions to do this. You will initiate different mutinies out on the ships and try to take over them. And you will also use your little skills here that you have on your captain's card, but also the different cards that you have on your hand. Plus, you can get new cards to your your deck by acquiring cards from the little market here as well. This game is played out during nine different rounds at a maximum because other things might trigger the end of game and during each round the players will go through three different steps. But before we look at the different steps let's take a look at our cards but also our captain. So this here could be your setup and this could be your captain. Out here you have your different meeples, you have your little pawns, you have your petty officers, your slopes, but also your jolly boats. If we start by looking at the boats, the slopes and jolly boats 
are pawns that players send to fields out on Nasu, or to ships, to gain resources, or to perform actions from these fields. At the start of the game, each player has one slope and one jolly boat. But once a player's jolly officer, meaning these ones over here, reaches field number 5 out on the treasure map track, they will get one additional slope. The petty officers, they are the player's markers that indicate how strong a player's position is on each of the different tracks on Nessu. While the pirates here are pawns that represent members of the crew. They can be used to resolve mutinies and search for treasures, among other things. And then we of course have the cards that you have on your hand. Now, as I told you, you start with the starting cards. These are the more basic cards. But as the game goes on, you can acquire better and stronger cards by getting cards from the market. Like Captain Jasper here, for example. Up here you can see the name of the character that you have. At the top right corner, you can see the required numbers of favors that you need to buy this card. This down here is the favors, the green number. Over here, you can see if you have any free action bonus. Down here, you can see sailing icons. These sailing icons will match up with ships out on the board. And if the icons are matching, well, you can travel to that ship. And at the bottom, you have bonuses or available missions of that card. And then you, of course, have the captain's special abilities. Now, these can be used at specific occasions during the gameplay. And you can read about these special rules in an extra appendix, because each of these captains have their own special ability. And I just won't go through them all. And that was a little bit about the cards and what the cards means. Now, let's take a look at the player's turns. Because we have the different rounds of the games, like I told you. We have the three different phases. And the player that has the first player marker, of course, gets to go first. Now, the first thing this player needs to do during the round is to place out this mitany marker on a ship. But they may only place it on a ship where there is no officers of any players yet. So once the first player have placed out the Mitni token on a ship, we go into the player turns. And during the player's turn, we can choose to do one of three things. We can go out sailing, we can do a mission, and when we can't do that anymore, we need to fold. But let's take a look at how we actually sail to the different ships. So the first thing we need to do when sailing is to choose the location we would like to sail to. And then we need to look at what type of location this is. Because we need to play a card from our hand and we need to be able to match that symbol to be able to travel to this location. As we can see here, we have the blue symbol, as we also have on the location which means that we can travel to this location. And next thing we need to do is to place either a sloop or a jolly boat. And we will place these on the matching symbols down in the action field. Meaning that the sloop goes where the sloop is. And the jolly goes where the jolly is. You cannot switch these around. Each of these spots can only hold one boat. If both of these slots are empty, you can choose to place a slope and a jolly if you like to. But if the action field is occupied by another player's sloop, you may not place your pawn here this round. Out on the main board, you can only place sloops and no jolly boats. The card that you use to sail is placed in your discard pile. So on these ships, we can see a multiple of different information. Up here, we have the name of this ship. And as I told you before, this is the symbol that you need to match to be able to travel to this ship. In the center, here where we have the artwork, this is our mutiny field. And down here are the actions that we can actually perform. Now, some of these ships might have several different actions that you can choose from. But you can only do one of those actions, and not all of them. If there are several actions, they are divided by brackets. Up here is where we would place our officers, but I would show you that in a bit. On these two fields down here, 
we can see the reward that we would get. And this can be anything from moving up on the different tracks or to get gold. But you can also choose to do actions on one of the four spaces on the Nassau board. To do this, you would again need to travel there, which you would do with the sloop. And no other boat on the Nassau board, remember? You simply take your little boat and you place it on the symbol. And then you also take your petty officers. That's a funny name, but it's still their name. And you move your pretty officer to the first spot on that track. And you collect everything on the spot they are standing. In this case, that would be barrels of rum. So that's the way you sail and do actions out on the ships, but also on the main board itself. Now, besides sailing and doing those actions, you can also do missions from your fellows. Like Black Meline here, for example. This symbol here means that you need to remove this card from the game to take three cards from the card shop pile and then remove two of them from the game. The third card you get to keep. And there are a bunch of different missions that you can use in this way. And usually you would discard this card to your discard pile. But remember, this card here is actually removed from the game. So once you can't sail or do the fellow actions anymore, or if you simply don't want to, well then you need to fold. And when you fold, you need to do four different steps. The first step is to pass the first player marker. Because if you are the first one to fold, well then you get the first player marker. But if you fold and you already have the first player marker, you simply put it in the center of the table for the next player to fold and then be able to take it. If the first player marker already have changed hands, well then the other players won't do this action, of course. The second step is do any free actions, because you can discard any number of cards from your hands to do any of these free actions that have a little red lightning ball. And this needs to be done now. The first step is to buy any cards. You have to uncover all the cards you have on your hand to see how many favors you have. In this case here we have four favors, meaning that we can buy any cards up to that value. We can of course choose to buy for less if we want to, but in that case the remaining favors will be lost. Once we have paid the cost we discard those cards and we take the card that we have bought and put it in our discard pile. And we need to refill the spot that we had emptied right away. The last step is to discard any remaining cards that you have on your hand and then draw five new ones. If your draw deck is empty you simply reshuffle your discard pile to create a new draw deck. And that was the last step of the player turns. Now we come into step number three of a round and this is the mutiny step. A mutiny breaks out on the ship that has the mutiny marker on it. And it's only players that has pirates on that ship that will take place in this mutiny. So in the mutiny, we are trying to bribe the crew on that ship to join us instead. So now each player needs to take some gold from the little treasure chest and put them up in their hand and hide them from the other players because we don't want them to know how much gold we are going to use to bribe this crew with. Then we will simultaneously show how much gold we have spent to bribe this crew. The player that has used the most gold to bribe the crew on that ship is the winner of this mutiny. The players that lost this mutiny removes half of their pirates, rounding up. But the player who actually won this mutiny gets to take their little pirate and place it up in the officer field. The winner also gets to advance their pretty boy over here one step on the control fleet track plus one or two steps on the flying gang track depending on what the reward set. The winner is entitled to benefits from the ship's control field. Every time anyone uses this ship's actions, they will also receive one rum. Once we have gone through these steps, this round is over and we're ready to go another round. And this is the way the game goes on for nine rounds. Unless a player reaches number 12 on the gang track first. 
or if a player reaches number 17 on the treasure track, because then the game would also end. And when the game ends, it's time for us to see who have won. To see how much scores we have received, we need to see our position on the control fleet track, on the treasure map track, and the flying gang track. Then we need to add the remaining resources, our rum and gold, to our score for a 3 to 1 ratio. Rounding down, and then we have a winner. Now that's one way to win the game, but there's actually an epic win here as well. Meaning that after the mutiny phase, if one player controls five ship, then he or she will win immediately. Or six ships in a three player game, or seven ships in a two player game. But in the but either way, if a player managed to have these amount of ships under control after the mutiny step, they win the game immediately and no points are counted. The winner with the most points, if the, the player with the most points is the winner of the game and becomes the number one pirate leader in this cruel, cruel world. And that, my friend, is how you play this game, which is quite a nice little game. It's a nice little worker placement game. It's easy to learn. It's easy to get into the rules. There's a lot of things for the players to do. There's a little bit of tricking here when you take your little coins and you try to bribe the little crews on the ship, try to trick your fellow players around the tables. There's a lot of neat little mechanics in this game and it's a nice little game for pretty much anyone to start to play with. There's not a lot of text in the game so you don't need to be able to read English or anything like that to be able to control the cards. You can get new pirates, you can build up your little fleet and this is a nice little worker placement game. There you have it my friend, that was Blackbeard's Lost Fleet, a worker placement game where you simply send out your pirates to take over Blackbeard's Lost Fleet. This is a cool little game, easy to learn, hard to master, a lot of things for the players to do. For all types of players, I mean for new ones, for more experienced ones, there's a lot of replayability here. If you want to know more about it, well check out the links down in the description. If you like the video, well subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. But most importantly my friend, please keep on spreading that board gaming love I know you all have. Peace out.